Okay, so this is the official start, and this is a status update. So the reason that we are doing that is fairly basic. RevenDB is moving in a fairly rapid f uh, pace. We're adding a lot of new features. We're adding a lot of uh, interesting. Um, I'm not. I don't really want to call it features because they're more like discoveries about the proper way or the most effective way that you have for using RevenDB. So, as I said, this is mostly a test run for future webinars that we're going to do. What we're going to talk about today is what is the concept of RevenDB. I want to hear from you what you think uh, uh, we are doing, what is cool, what is not cool, what is missing, stuff like that. And hopefully we'll start doing that on a regular basis. So the current status, we're currently on bill 465. Uh, it has been two and a half years. It's unbelievable for me when I'm saying that, but I've been working on that for two and a half years. And this is only from the first commit. If you go to the blog, you can see that I've been working on that in some fashion for ridiculous amount of time. Three to five, three to four years. Uh, that is the number that uh, <laughs> that I have. Uh, this is really scary. Uh, we launched in May of 2010, which is about yes, thank you. We are now at the full webinar. Uh, we launched at May of 2010, which is 16 months from now, and this was the business plan for RevenDB. Uh, basically, from the from launch we would have a year for actually doing something. Doing something that is creating a viable and long-lasting product. And the most important thing was that, yes, we'll have a viable product, but we also have fun doing that. Okay? Um, I have experience working on close of software, so it's just a, such as the Enhanced Profiler. And the Enhanced Profiler is a very cool piece of software, but at heart, I like working on open source software. So that is uh, what I basically wanted to do, work on viable product in an open source fashion. So that is why RevitB exists. And as it turned out, things haven't gone according to plan. So I imagine that, OK, this is a new thing. It's going to take a long time for people to start getting familiar with it. and. That is why I we literally budget a full year of development before we expect the fourth sale. And what actually happened is that in four months from the uh, launch, we had a sale. And five months from launch, we had someone actually going to production. Uh, that was actually a very interesting feeling. You know, you have this expectation that, OK, we're going, we're doing something, we're getting the community, and suddenly, OK, uh, we're going to production, but can you push this thing to the stable branch because we really want to go without the production? It was amazing. Uh, we have over 800 members in the main list, and we have over 1,000 messages per month, which is very active community. If you look at the all of statistics, I've posted about it in my blog recently, we are in the top 2% of active open source projects. We have over 50 people who have committed to the project overall, and close to 35 people who have committed in the last year alone. That is, I don't know if you have the ability to value that, but as someone who has been doing a lot of open source, that is absolutely amazing. And the overall response for FNDB has been absolutely positive, and we are ha very happy about it. Enough with that. Uh, you're probably here to hear about RevenDB itself. So probably most visible thing that uh, happened with RevenDB is the banners. <laughs> well, not really. So we, this is, uh, we literally just went over a list of features for the last three months. And here are the big features that we have. So we have all support. Previously, we only had Windows authentication. So uh, you can only authenticate against Active Directory or the local computer. Now we have all support, so you can authenticate against anything. We also can with the built-in support for just 
um, you can define users inside RavenDB directly. This is using the Raven.bundles.authorization plugin. Uh, we have made significant work on actual perf performance in general, but more specifically on reducing the amount of memory that RavenDB uses. We have done that by being smart about the things that we cache and releasing, releasing things more easily. Um, one of the problems that uh, we actually had in this regard is that we assume that we are the sole proprietor of the machine. So we try to use as much memory as possible, which is exactly the thing that you want to do if and only if you're the only thing on the machine. Uh, many, uh, many of our customers are actually running really be uh, not as a separate machine, but also as part of either embedded or as a on a server that runs the actual application or maybe additional applications as well. So we have drastically reduced the amount of memory. We also fixed some memory leaks that we found in Lucene itself. Uh, then we have multi-map reduced indexes. And I posted the link the, to the blog post on the mailing list, but the basic, but it hasn't shown up on the public uh, blog yet. So, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the notion of MapReduce, but you know what, let's talk with that. I think, that I feel that I will lose a lot of you if I really start to talk about that. So let me just show you what we are talking about. Uh, so this is RavenDB. We are now loading, uh, we are now just loading the default database. Okay, as you can see, we have just, we are running in memory, there is nothing in here. We are running in memory because I have, as you can see here, we execute raven.server/ram, which basically means running memory, which is wonderful when you want to run it in tests. Okay, or in this case, if you, if you just want to run a presentation without bothering with uh, anything else. So we are going to create some sample data, and now we have sample data that we can play around with. And the reason that I'm showing you all of that, some of which I assume that you already know, is because I want you to look at this. And this is very important, because what you see here is a MapReduce index. And the problem with the term MapReduce is that it tends to scare people because it is so complicated, it's so hard to understand. This requires me to, you know, spend three years at Google studying and meditating and maybe fasting a lot. But the basic idea, what MapReduce is, that you have a function that takes a, a list of elements and returns a list of elements, potentially different from the incoming elements. And you have a, another function, the reduce function, that takes a list of elements and return a, and return a value. That's the entire thing. Now, when you, the, the reason that this is such an important thing is that it allows you to do distributed processing of the information. So, this doesn't really matter that much. What does matter is that we actually have the ability to work with that very easily with RavenDB. I mean, look at the two the, look at the two link queries that we have uh, that, that you, you see here. How many of you understand what is going on here? Can figure out what these two queries are doing? Please raise your hand if you do. So. I really like these raise hand things. Uh, so we have 40, 50 percent that says that they understand. Uh, I don't know how many of the others either do not understand or can figure out how to raise their hands. Uh, but it, for the amount of people who raised their hands before, I think this is uh, fairly consistent. So most of you actually understand uh, what's going on here. And if you look at this, the first part, the map part, basically, it's a link over the of over the album's collection, and it is going to output another uh, list of the artist's IDs 
in the artist names. So far, so good, right? It's fairly simple, and I would expect anyone to understand that. Uh, oh, yeah, so we have a, a good suggestion. How many, how many of you do not understand these queries? Do not understand. Okay. So, 6%, okay, and it's going down. So, okay. So, the fourth query is basically, let's iterate, let's go over the album's collection and output the artist ID and the artist name. This is fairly simple, I would expect most people who have any, any sort of familiarity with, uh, with C Sharp 3.5 and above to recognize that. The reduce part is slightly more complicated than that. We are iterating over a collection, and now we are doing a, a group by, excuse me for a second. So, so now we are doing a group by on the artist ID and name into G. And then we are exporting that uh, key and ID. So basically what we are doing in SQL, we are doing the following. So this is the map, because that's, that might, most cases, that would be easier to understand. Now, let's, what is the reduce? The reduce is, Now, how many of you do not understand these two SQL queries? Do not understand. How many of you do? Okay. So that's great. That's absolutely great. So this is, this is basically the same thing, but we're using a slightly different syntax, the link syntax. So what we're doing here is we go over all of the uh, documents in the database that belongs to the album's collection and output these two. Now we take, you know what, here is the simplest way, so this is the reduce stage, uh, C -sharp. so this is the reduce, this is the map, And this is where we end. Okay? So, what, I've ha what I have in front of you is literally a map reduce a, a set. And this is expressed as link queries in C sharp. And this is about as simple as you can get it to work. You can get it to be. The interesting things about this, the reason that we cannot actually, uh, we, the reason that we cannot actually just use a single link statement is actually, the, uh, actually uh, this is actually mostly about the actual implementation that we have to run against. It's not that important right now. Uh, the most important thing to understand is that uh, Having these two stage, uh, these two things as separate things allows us to do something very, very important, to do incremental evaluation of the values. What do I mean by that? I mean that, let's call this the map function, and let's call this the reduce function. 